me. Let's go. Most Muslims don't know what Muhammad said because their leaders hide it from them. Unfortunately. Now, is that true? Yes. <laughs> In fact, Dawa over Dunya is only responding to this because someone saw my video and ran to him. Probably a bunch of people saw my video, ran to him. What do you, how do you answer this? How do you answer this? And then, ha ha, David's acting like we don't like we don't share this information. My goodness, man. You could do an experiment. You could you could go outside a mosque, ask a hundred Muslims who are walking out of that mosque if they've heard any of this. Zero out of one hundred has ever heard of this. Mm-hmm. No. Unfortunately, David, most Muslims are just too busy to give you the time of day, but it's cool, man. I got a minute, so yeah, come on, I'll see what you that's got. That's the issue. Most Muslims have absolutely no clue what their own prophet said about how Allah forgives them mm -hmm. and rewards them with paradise. The prophet said, no Muslim man dies, but Allah causes a Jew or a Christian to enter the fire in his stead. Oh yeah, a real smoking gun, David. Yeah, Allah, I gotta go eat, so let's make this quick. Imam an explains this using this narration, which says that there are two abodes created for every person, one in paradise and one in hellfire. Now, did you catch that? There are two abodes. That that's exactly what I thought he was saying. And that's the same response I've read on uh, Islam Q&A. But the mm -hmm. explanation is Allah has created two abodes for every person. Okay, so wait, what? what's that going to do with anything? If, if, if every person has two abodes, one in hell and one in heaven, then how 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 are you taking my place or how am I taking your place? We each have two places. It's like if every person in the world had two houses and you go to one of your houses, that has nothing to do with one of my houses at all. Th this, this answers nothing that was brought up. But he's thumping his chest like he's, he's, he's destroyed it all. And, and the amazing part is probably all or at least close to all of his fans. I haven't looked. You could go through that. You could go through the comments if you wanted. But I guarantee if someone wants to go over to the comments, oh, you've destroyed David. What a great explanation. And he's, he's not within a thousand miles of remotely addressing anything that's been said. This is just how Dawa works. All right, let's go back a little. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, this is like, you know, you did that stream with AP where you addressed first Samuel 15. You put it in context, showed the hyperbole. Uh, this, let's say you didn't do that. Let's say instead, your response to that was like, well, let me just read John 3.16. Like, you're not even addressing the passage yeah. if you were mm -hmm. doing that. You're just jumping to something else. This is what he's doing here. Yeah. Um, this answers not, th this answers nothing about what was said. And I mean, the passages specifically say that Allah takes the sins of Muslims and puts them on Jews and Christians. And he says, no, no, no. This is just saying every person has a place in heaven and a place in hell. And Somehow, if a Muslim goes to heaven, he's taking the place of a of a Christian, and then the Christian is taking the Muslim's place in hell. Wait a minute, I thought we all had two places. This makes zero sense. It makes no sense. And the problem with their followers is they program their followers to accept this kind these kinds of nonsensical uh, explanations that don't answer anything, and it's just accepted. But all right, let's go ahead and uh, let him let me back it up here a little bit. All right. Yeah, Allah, I gotta go eat, so let's make this quick. Imam an explains this using this narration, which says that there are two abodes created for every person, one in paradise and one in hellfire. And it goes on to say that when somebody dies and enters hellfire, the people in paradise inherit his abode. And now, David, you can see why most Muslims don't give you the time of day. But let's go ahead and look at them. Uh, IP, you can tell me what you think any of these, uh, any of these passages mean. So... Um, here we have, this is, these are all from Sahih Muslim. If you're using the Darussalam, I mean, this is from the Darussalam edition. So this is the print version. Uh, so Sahih Muslim 7011, it was narrated. And let me go and read the uh, chapter heading. The vastness of Allah's mercy towards the believers and every Muslim will be ransomed by a disbeliever from the fire. Every, mu every Muslim will be ransomed by a disbeliever from the fire. So. Every single Muslim who's going to make it to paradise is ransomed by a disbeliever. And we'll see. These are Jews and Christians. All right. It was narrated that Abu Musa said, the messenger of Allah said, when the day of resurrection comes, Allah, glorified and exalted is he, will give every Muslim, every single Muslim, a Jew or a Christian. And he will say, this is your ransom from the fire. So notice you have it in the uh, uh, chapter heading here and you have right there from Muhammad. This is your ransom 
from the fire. That is what Allah, according to Muhammad, is going to say to every single Muslim who's going to paradise. This Jew or this Christian is your ransom from the fire. Now, uh, IP, does this sound, and this is this is kind of the easiest one, does this sound like Allah is simply saying, hey, every person who's born has a place in, in heaven and a place in hell, and if a Muslim goes to heaven, then he's somehow taking the place of the Jew or the Christian in heaven, and the Jew or the Christian is taking the place of the Muslim in hell. Does that sound like what this is talking about? Uh, no. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't sound like anything close to that, as far as I can tell. No. And that's just this one. That's just this one. Oh, it gets worse. It gets worse, IP. So here's uh same chapter, Hadith number 7012. Aun and Said bin Abi Burda narrated that they witnessed Abu Burda narrating to Umar bin Abdul Aziz from his father that the Prophet said, No Muslim man dies, but Allah causes a Jew or a Christian to enter the fire in his stead. So the reasoning here, so notice what, one, notice what it says, and then notice the uh, the explanation we get from the Dawah guys. No Muslim man dies, but Allah causes a Jew or a Christian to enter the fire in his stead. So when a Muslim dies, Allah is going to cause a Jew or a Christian to enter hell in place of the Muslim. The Muslim, the Dawah explanation Unless I unless I misheard it, unless I completely misheard it, is that but I, I I've seen this before. I think this is on IslamQA.com. But the claim is that every person has a place in uh paradise and a place in hell. And uh when so when a Muslim takes his place in heaven, then the Christian is taking his place in hell or something like that. Again, that makes no sense. Why? Because according to the very statement, every, according to the very statement of the Muslim Dawah guys, everyone has a place in heaven or a place in hell. So you take mm -hmm. one place or the other. It's like saying, hey, you've got two houses, one here and one there. Which one are you going into? Well, I'm going into this one. Well, that's not the same as taking someone else's spot. That other person has two spots too. And he went into a different one. So are we in agreement that this makes absolutely no sense given what, uh, given what Dawah over Dunya said? No, this is clearly talking about Christians taking uh, the sins of the Muslims and they have to suffer uh, the sins that the Muslims committed when they're in the hellfire. It's kind of a yeah. little sadistic. Yeah, and it's going it's going to become increasingly clear as we go through all the passages, which he didn't even mention. He just mentions one and then acts like, ah, I'll give the solution, which doesn't even fit that passage, but fits the other passages even less. So uh, the... Next hadith is a it's a repeat with a different chain of narrators, but it's an additional confirmation for what's being said. Then we have Sahih Muslim 7014. It was narrated from Abu Burda from his father that the Prophet said, On the day of resurrection, some Muslim people will come with sins like mountains, but Allah will forgive them and will place them, the sins, place the, per, the, the Muslim who has sins like mountains. We're not talking about your average Muslim friend who, who, who may be a you know, totally nice guy, maybe one of the nicest people, maybe one of the most moral people you've ever met. The passage says it's talking about especially horrible people, like people with sins as heavy as mountains. These guys have been doing horrible stuff all their lives, and yet somehow these are humble servants of Allah. And apparently Allah can't just let these sins slide. They're mountains of sins. He has to do something. Someone has to pay for these mountains of sins. But Allah specifically said he's going to tell the angels, take these mountains of sins off the Muslims and put them on the Jews and Christians. That's what we're, that's what I brought up. <laughs> How many how many times has Kenny Boomer debate wanted the Boomer wanted to debate you? How many responses has this guy done to you? I just I just love they never have time for you, but they're constantly focused on you. Yeah, and uh, but notice like 
again, this is Dawa. It's pretend that you've answered it because the vast majority of your followers, if not 100% of your followers, are just watching how confident you sound when you answer. As long as you sound like you've, oh, I just sound like I schooled this guy. That's all that matters. Mm -hmm. They're not actually, they're not actually going, okay, what was actually said? And what were the, what were the statements of my prophet that uh, we're examining? Um, and do this person's, ex does, does this person's explanation actually answer those claims of my prophet? They're not doing any of that. Oh, he, he claimed that he destroyed it. And uh, he sounds really confident. And that's all, that's all that really matters. And this is Dawah.